Hi everyone, welcome to this screencast. Um, I'm creating this specially for you because the ones that I saw on YouTube I wasn't quite satisfied with and I want to make sure that you get a special introduction that's unique to the webinar that you'll be doing for our course. So, when you enter into Adobe Connect, you will be provided a link via email, and you'll just have to enter that you're a guest, and then insert your name, and then it will bring you into this layout right here. So this is the main screen, and there are different layout formats that you can have. We have three preset right here, um, and for the native English speakers, you'll see that not all of the text from German automatically goes into English, but you should be okay. It's not, you won't be too dependent on these. So I'll just give you a quick glimpse of what this looks like. You can switch to this one, which focuses on discussion, and it has a webcam right here. I'll get to the other pods momentarily. And then this one is Susammen Arbeit, which means collaboration. And so here you can see that there's a webcam here and then a presentation here. This is similar to the original one that we first had in which you have content that you can share here and then a webcam here. So in the presenter mode, I will switch that right now. Um, you're going to do make presenter. So in this, in this con uh, context, I'll be considered the presenter. So you can start your webcam and that would allow everyone to see your face as you're presenting. This is not necessary, but I think that it does create like a nicer, more like intimate uh, setting. I won't do that today because my webcam is actually non-functional and causes my computer to crash, but I think that everyone knows basically what this is. So the next pod that I want to introduce you to is the attendee list. Here you can see a list of all the people that are within the meeting room. So we have one host, um, one presenter, and then two students. And this is really informative because people can um, set their status that will, uh, again, inform your presentation. So what kind of status can they do? Up here, this is where you set your own status. And individuals can raise their hand, agree or disagree, or step away. So if they have a question, they raise their hand. If they have to step away to go to the restroom, they select this. Um, and if you do a quick verbal poll, you can ask them to say if they agree or disagree, and it's a great way to see um, quick feedback. So let's just look at what that might be really quick. So I'm going to have student one raise their hand. And if you look to the icon right here, you'll see that it shows that they're actually raising their hands, all right? And you can start a private chat with them, which we'll get to in just a moment, or you can just address them um, through your narration, and ask them to ask their question. We can have them activate their webcam and ask face-to-face, -face, or they can just type it into the chat. Uh, another example for the status is whether they agree or disagree. And here I'll now activate student two. And you can see that they agree, and this one disagrees. And then after this clears out, um, everyone can then remove their um, status as we move on to the next question. Okay? And then from the presenter, uh, from the host view, just so that you know, you can change your role, and let's see you go back to host. If someone raises their hand, they'll be able to approve or de decline their ability to speak up. So let's try that right now. So we have student number one, and I'll take my iPad, I'll do the webcam, And then you can see me onto the computer where I can ask my question now. Okay, so then the next pod is the chat. And what is really good is that you can have a entire meeting chat, and this is the one with everyone. And then you also see another um, tab show up in which you can just have a private chat. So here you can have start chat with hosts, the other presenters, if you're more than one person, and or the attendees, so you can choose specific individuals, all right? 
Uh, very, very useful. It can also be used for questions and answers throughout the discussion. So this pod right here is going to be the most important pod. You will be able to either share your desktop screen, which I don't think will be likely. However, um, you can also do a whiteboard. And I'll just show you this really quick. Essentially, you can do some quick drawing. And I guess this would be good if um, you have a Wacom board and a stylus, so don't feel pressure to use this, but just so that you know it's there. And then you can also do shared document. Now, I would highly, highly suggest that you send me your documents ahead of time. There's two reasons for this. A, it avoids um, potential delays in upload time, which can take some time depending on the content of your presentation. And also, it will ensure that your presentation shows up in the way that is compatible with how it was originally designed. So let me give you an example. If I open up this presentation right here, this maintains many of my animations, but originally this was all on one line, okay? So some of the formatting does end up getting mixed up. Let me show you another example. This is perfect. So see right here, it's lost its formatting. Obviously, this should be on one line. So instead of doing a, a PowerPoint presentation, although it makes it less dynamic, I would really suggest just using a PDF of your presentation or it's going to lose your animations and that's never fun, but it is the way to ensure that it's most compatible. And then basically you can just move through your document as much as you need to, right? So a main thing here is that you want to have, uh, if you want everyone to see the same slide that you're seeing, you can use this button right down here called sync. And pressing this on and off will ensure that as you move the slides, it will move the slides as well for the participants. Participants are unable to sync and unsync their slides. So just be aware of that. There is also a pointer function here. So if you would like to highlight something in particular, if you're saying, oh, why isn't this moving? That's really funny. Oh, there we go. If you want to say, uh, hey everyone, you should pay attention to this right here, that's the functionality that you would use there. Um, some other items right here is uh, just to stop sharing and then force presenter view, and that basically enables that everyone's seeing the same screen that you are. So, I will now put um, myself back as a uh, presenter so that you see all the functionalities available to you as well here. Okay, so um, one other thing that I wanted to point out is that you have these different layouts as I had explained earlier. So let's go to the discussion layout. Here you see that the main focus is on the camera and voice rather than the presentation materials. You have the attendee list right here. And then you also have um, a poll pod, a larger chat pod, and then discussion notes. So the discussion notes, basically what you can do is you can leave notes that will be accessible and viewable by everyone within the meeting room. I have to say, I think this is a little bit poor design because I think it would be nice to have individual notes, but please do know that, that they are accessible to everyone. And these can just be uh, making notes about Transfer is all around us. Make sure that you're making connections, right? And here I previously left a note that remember to tell the presenters about the poll pod. So now I will go over to the poll pod to show you that. So here you can create polls that will enable some sort of quiz or, um, you know, like test functionality within the presentation, and this is a really great way of ensuring engagement and interaction. Our students are really, really proactive, they're really, really great and motivated, but it's just another way to bring your presentation to the next level. So you can see there's multiple choice options, there's multiple answer, and then there's also short answer. This is just one 
answer for multiple choice, and this is multiple choice, but multiple answers, and then this is open. So one good thing to know about the polls is that if you do anticipate doing some sort of poll ahead of time, do let us know because these can be prepared and then be ready to go um, before the start of your presentation so that they don't need to be done, you know, within like the hour of presenting. Under here, you can also broadcast the results and these can be broadcasted either as numbers, percentage, or both. So the next layout will introduce us to one new pod and that is the Q&A. So here we have the Q&A right over here. And um, what is great is that there's the presenter view and then the participant view. So this kind of shows up as a chat, whereas in the presenter view, it shows up as a list of questions. So you can do show all of the questions, show open questions, answered questions, and then the questions that you've been submitting. Once you uh, select one of these, if you go into the participant view, you can say, how does the Q&A work? And then the question earlier, or the answer earlier was, you submit a question by using send a message, okay? And this was another example that I used earlier in an earlier recording. Um, I just said that this is responded to, and this is responding again. So you can see it's just like a chat. Um, and then when you go here, you can assign this answer to an individual person, right? And then that um, forces them to uh, either receive the answer or to provide the answer. And here you can move the presenter view to the POA, um, you can send messages to, and you can clear all of the questions. So let's clear all of the questions. Okay, we'll send a new question, send message to this is my new question. Okay, shows up right like that. And then you would just be able to click there. So let's do another one. This is my second question. Thank you for your question. All right. And then what you're able to do is just click right between these. And so the last items is that what I do want you to know is that you can have a pre-specified layout um, to your liking. You've basically been introduced to all of the pods um, I'll go through the remaining ones really quick, but please do know that if you have a specific layout that you like, just let me know and we can set this up for you. So other things to know is that you have, um, you can just choose the layout that you'd like. You can um, select the different pods that you want. So you can, if you don't want the Q&A, for example, you just remove that, right? And then if you want it back, you put it back. Um, you can also set up like sharing web links, sharing files, so that if students want to upload their own files, that's a really great way of uh, introducing collaboration as well. And then the chats, you can have different chats um, as we've already described. So the other thing is that you can enable single speaker mode. This is a great way of ensuring that no one's talking over anyone and there's no background noise. And then here are just your uh, technical items. So. Just deactivate that. So you have to mute your speakers. You have to connect your audio and to select the microphone, whether it's external or internal. And then the same for your webcam, enabling it and selecting which one you want. And then here are the status that we went over earlier. And I just want to go over the remaining ones really quick. Let me remove this slide in the background so it's less distracting. So. Individuals can also say, speak louder, speak softer, to speed up, slow down, hopefully no one uses any of these, and then laughter if they found something um, humorous, and then applause if they, you know, really want to congratulate or appreciate something that you've said and done. 
So that is everything to Adobe Connect that you really need to know. Actually, I just remember there's one more thing that I wanted to show. So right here, thank you for your patience. Uh, right here, you can also see the status of everyone. So let's say that um, one student is saying agree and then another student is saying disagree as we did earlier. You can see how many students and which students are saying agree and disagree and those that have stepped away and those that have a raised hand, uh, just as we talked about earlier. And then for the activities that you'll be implementing, these breakout rooms are really, really great. So this is another place where the German does not translate. This says Arbeitsgruppen, which also means working groups. And so you have one, two, three. And so the students can be just distributed between the groups evenly and randomly. And this enables the students to work virtually online and to uh, communicate with one another on um, a particular activity that you have going on. Further, what's great to this is that you as a presenter um, can enter these different working groups and then connect with the individual students and say, hey, how is everything going? Do you have any further questions? Um, I really like this idea, etc. So it's a really great way to interact with them on a smaller scale and then get the feedback from everyone else in more of a face-to-face -face context. So that is now everything. And as I said earlier, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to let me know. I think everything is going to be great, and we really look forward to your presentation.